old and old ragged rose, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was Trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Oh, the old rugged cross, so despised by. Attraction for me, for the dear Lamb of God left His glory above to bear it to the Calvary. So I cherish the old again. Trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Tuombe Baba Mungu uishie katika juu mbinguni na katika mioyo wa ya wanao kuamini twanja miguuni pako masaa haya masaa ya sambato, masaa ya kukuabudu tukisema ni asante Bamba nena pamoja nasi siku ya leo have a wand for each one of us kutana na mahitaji ya kila mmoja wetu sawa sawa na mapensi ya mbingu wenye wako miongoni mwetu wenye hawasiki vizuri bamba kutana na mahitaji yao wenye wako na shinda mbalimbali kutana na mahitaji yetu kwa sababu bamba ilikuwa ni tambia yako wakati wa sambato ulikuwa unatembea ukitendea watoto wako vyema siku ya leo bamba tutendee vyema tukitoka hapa tuseme bamba tumekutana na wewe na ni katika jina la Yesu tunaomba na kuamini amen hamjambo hamjambo ni siku ya furaha tunapokuja pamoja hivi. Jua katika kanisa hili ambalo ni kanisa la nyumbani. Ni furaha yangu ninapoona ya kwamba at least kila familia ile ambayo inaoshika hapa imewakilishwa na vizuri. Naamini ya kwamba katika hizi familia zote kwa ni kama kila mmoja amehusika. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri zaidi sote tukuje kuna yule ambaye anastahili kukaa nyumbani kwa sababu ni siku ya furaha ni siku kila mmoja wetu anapomletea malipo yake kumuu na aweze kufarikiwa katika maisha haya na wasalimu wa mjambo hatujambo nimeingia kwa hii program kwa ajili ya maombi mafupi kwa mtoto bora kuanze program Fabi bumu kuhu yu Yesu mwenye huruma Atuleta yefaraja Yesu mwokozi wetu
Asante, vile uh, tuko hapa na mzee Otara. Eh uh, tuta, tutaomba sisi wawili uh, maombi mafupi kwa ajili ya mtoto Debora na vile anaenda kufanyiwa hii uh, surgery ikuwe successful na yeye apone apate kutumia mguu wake sawa sawa na kila eh uh, mwanadamu vile anatumia mguu wake. Si nini? Kama tujaomba ni akina nani maombi yao ni kwamba Success, eh, surgery kuwe successful Mtoto Deborah apone vizuri Na atendee kama watu wengine Asante sana Hiyo ni maombi Ya, ya watu wote Mzee Otani Tuombe Baba wetu Mumba wa mbingu na inchi Tuwaja kwa kote na wakati huu Mbani wa mjani Tukitoa shukura nisetu Kwa sababu ya uhai Na upendo ambao mtukimia sisi Mbele yetu kuna mtoto Deborah ambaye papa kwa muda ameugua na sasa papa mnatoa njia ya kibekee ili aweze kupata ukombo. Tunaona ya kwamba ameratikiwa ya kwamba aweze kupatiwa matibabu hayo siku ya Jumatano. Mungu wetu kuandamane na wazazi na wewe uweze kuwa ni mtangulizi pale. Uweze kuwa umetoa hekima itokayo kwako kwa madaktari wale ambao watakao hudumu. Na zaidi ya hapo papa ile dawa atakayoitumia iweze kuwa ya kumponya haraka ili papa aweze kurejea katika afya yake. Unajua ya kwamba shughuli hii ingefanywa na malaika lakini papa umetupatia kama madaktari na kama wazazi ili papa tuweze kuhudumu kwa sababu iweze kuweza kuonyesha upendo wako na malaika yale ambao umetukirimia. Tuomba katika jina la Yesu alimwombeshe. Baba wa mbinguni tunakushukuru. Mtoto Deborah ni mtoto wako na anakupenda. Baba, huyu mtoto tumemweka mikono na mwako. Atakapochukuliwa hospitali siku ya Jumatano kufanyiwa operation, tumemweka mikono ni mwako na wale madaktari tumemweka mikono ni mwako. Saidi ya yote mbingu imfanyie upasuaji yenyewe. Baba, huyu mtoto apate kupona. Pesa na fedha ambazo wazazi wanatafuta kwa ajili ya kumponya huyu mtoto, pesa ni zako. Baba tunaomba sipata kupatikana kwa sababu we utatitoa kutia kwa mifuko ya wanao. Baba utukariki. Kupatia Debora amani na wazazi wake, na ndugu zake na dada zake kwa patia amani. Sisi kama kanisa tumeweka mikononi mwako na tunajua utamulinda na umtunze. Tunaomba katika jina la Yesu aliye Bwana na mwokozi wetu. Amen. Asante sana mbaba. Bila mbaya na yekuacha Thank <laughs> It's the best. It's the best protein versus protein. The Lord will fight for you and you won't need, need to lift a finger. I repeat, the Lord will fight for you and you won't need to lift a finger. <laughs> Ooh. Mm-hmm.
around and all the time. Amen. Naitwa Dr. Mrs. Rusi Oginda. Mimi ni ni mbimbi wa wa mume mmoja naitwa Elda Charles Oginda ni mama pia today we want to to share because we have the bible and it's our point of sharing and i'm asking a question in my topic and the bible is providing an answer my topic is in a tight corner that's a question be still the road will fight for you in a tight corner be still the road will fight for you let us pray gracious master in heaven we come before you once again speak to us send us your holy spirit to be with us as i start be with us from the beginning to the end have a word for each one of us in Jesus name I pray and believe. Amen. In a tight corner, be still, the road will fight for you. It soon be like our memory text. Eh? In a tight corner, and you, you answer, be still, the road will fight for you. Tight corner, what is a tight corner? What is a tight corner? Have any of us faced that tight corner? And a tight corner, is some difficult situation. Yani mali unasikia umefika mwisho. Difficult situation. Umejaribu njia sote kama mwanadamu umeona umefika wapi? Mwisho. Eh kama wanadamu unaweza kuwa umefikiswa mwisho na magonjwa kama saa hii the whole world tumefikiswa mwisho na corona. That's a, a, a difficult situation. Ya tight call. Yani you are in a corner which is very tight. Kujitoa hapo ni ngumu. Then una, wale wametoka kufanya mtihani saa hii. The exam was the tight corner. And not just the exam. What is the expectations of the parents? Who have been paying what? School fees. You know the parents have expectations. That alone is your tight corner. Is your tight corner. But if you are in a tight corner and do what? Be still, God will fight, fight for, for you. Parents, what is your tight, tight corner? You, you have been given children, you've taken them to church, you've taken them to country institutions, and then all of a sudden the children are rebelling. That's your tight corner. That's your tight corner. That's a tight corner. The children have done class 8. Form 4. They need to move forward. There is no school fees. Corona has stopped everything. Is that not a tight corner? That's a tight corner. Challenges in marriage. In the news every day, sometimes you even fail to watch the news. Because what comes before even the headlines? People killing each other. You are, you are rather the ones who you couldn't, like now, the ones who are who, who are in courtship. And even just a minute, you just text, you just do what, video call. You can't even think sign by sign. But now you enter into marriage, two years, three years, killing each other. Challenges in marriage, there are so many. But when your marriage is reaching that corner, that corner which is very tight, be still. God will fight for you. This corona is killing people. And almost everyone is affected. When you have the death of a very close family member, then God is speaking to you this morning that be still, I will fight for you. Do we have some examples in the Bible where people reached that corner, that tight corner, and God spoke to them? Because we want the, the same voice. The same voice is the same voice which is speaking to us. I want us to open our Bibles and follow the story of Israel as they were doing the Exodus. That story is in Exodus 14. To see whether those people reached a corner 
where they saw darkness. Exodus 14. And from that story, we will read it. And as we read it, we, we will be drawing the lessons from that story. Because the Bible has lessons for us. We should read and draw lessons. Not just reading those who are Israelites. No, we are the Israelites of today. Because we said, if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's children. And you are the children of the promise. So, this story does not only relate to the Israelites of the old. It's our story today. If you go to Exodus, verse 1 and 2, you will find that then the Lord is saying to Moses. So it's the Lord who is speaking. So it's the Lord who is directing. Tell the Israelites to turn back and come near Pirhahiroth between Migdor and the sea. They are to come by the sea directly opposite Bar Sephron. It's the Lord speaking. And if, if you look at that history, where the Lord is directing them to, to come, there is no way out. There is no way out. Wafirandefi wakaimba wimbo. Nyuma fala ombele mbahali kando kando mirima e musa tuwa yetu wapi. It's the Lord who is directing them to camp where there is no way out. So, when you are in a tight corner, know that, that this is the place which God sometimes leads you. It's God who is leading you to that corner. Anything happening to you today, God is fully aware. God is fully aware. As he does not sleep like human beings. If you read Psalms 121 and verse 4, the whole of Psalms 121, it's very clear that our God does not sleep, our God does not slumber. He didn't haku sincere, akakuta njambo furani lili kutendekea. He is fully aware and he has around it. So these are the Israelites. God is directing them to camp where there is no way out. Then, verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 and 4. Verse 3 says, Pharaoh will think the Israelites are wandering around the land in confusion, hemmed in by the desert. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself, through Pharaoh and all his army. Pharaoh is who? Pharaoh is Israelites' enemies. God has performed miracles, he has around them to go. Now, God also hardened Pharaoh's heart to think that ah, these Israelites, they don't even know the way. <laughs> Pharaoh will think that the Israelites are wandering around. So when you are in that tight situation, your enemies will be raving at you, your enemies will be mocking you. Where is your God? Where is your God? Call your God to see whether he will save you. So even Kina Meshach and Chandra, that's what they were told by these, these tormentors. I eh? will put you in that fire and see who is this God who can save you from my, my hand. So your enemies will be loving. Problems you have, enemies are loving. Hey, Angalia, metenda dampi. The, the Pharaoh was, was raving at them. Then, verse 10 to 12, we are reading the whole of that story, verse 10 to 12, of Exodus 14 says, verse 10 says, as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and they there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? 
What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? The Israelites. What did they do? They started complaining to Moses. Egypt. So what are we saying? Tight corner is a place where sometimes we fell the round. So you have seen a surround who has directed you. Now he has directed you, you start complaining. You start complaining. God wants you to believe, you is just complaining. <coughs> we fell the round by our unbelief and by our complaints. Kunungunika tu, kunungunika tu, kwa nini mimi ulitaka ifanyikia na? Kwa nini mimi? Kwa nini, kwa nini, kwa nini? And our God, we have said, does not sleep and does not slumber. Verses 13 and 14. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. And our key text, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be to be still. People have complained to Moses. They think this this is a person who under a lot of faith. You are in the middle of nowhere, Bere, Bahali, Numa, Niandrui, Kando Kando, Mirima, these are Israelites with the children, old people. Are, are you getting that, that scenario? Yeah. Women with the, who are pregnant, others with the children. And you know those days, I don't think there was anything called family planning. <laughs> so they had do let me so so others are here others are here others are in the hands eh? and the men they are with the cattle and with their belongings eh? so you can see that situation and these Israelites they they were their livelihood was not in the war they they, they didn't have any experience in war them they, they know how to keep the cows and the goats and and the chickens, eh? I think they were like the kisses. The kisses, you go there and, and the land is full of food and the, the, the lands are very small, very small land, eh? So, Moses must have had that faith. These are people, this is the sea. If, if you read before that verse 10, you, you'll see how Pharaoh got the best of the chariots, the best of the army men. And he knew these Israelites. So they were slaves. Walinjifunzia vita wapi? Hakuna maali walinjifunza vita. So, we, 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 we see that tight corner is a place where God saves us. And God's time is always the best. See, we wait upon the road. And now from there, if you read that story, if you read that story, you see now, God has, Moses has spoken, and now from there, since God, Moses has told the people, God will fight for you. You don't even need to do anything. You just need to stand still. And I'm telling you from there, if you read that, you will see now God taking over from Moses. God taking over from Moses. And he told Moses, tell the people to move forward. Tell the people to move forward. You see sometimes there is God's path and there is your path. If you are told to move forward and you, you refuse, in Bali I can't. They were told to move forward. The sea was not divine and fast. They were told, move, forward. move forward. If, if they resisted, they couldn't have been saved. Mm -hmm. So they were told, move forward. And Moses was instructed, use your rod and use the rod. The sea was patterned. And before their eyes, they saw the crowd. They were led by the crowd. Eh? Mm -hmm. They saw the crowd move backward. 
And you can imagine, see right now we are in, it's daylight. As we are seeing the light, the sun, and from this house in back one, they are seeing what? Darkness. So they were separated like that. The ground stopped between them. The, the Egyptians saw darkness and Giza Tororo. So it was a Totoro. I'm an Toro. So they could not see each other now. They could not see each other. The whole night, the Israelites was like in daytime to them. They crossed very well. They crossed. And the Egyptians just fall on in the darkness. Eh? Just fall on in the darkness. They just fall on in the darkness. See, the Israelites couldn't see them. Yeah, they, they could see them coming. They could see them coming. So in in the daybreak, even when you are in problems, even your enemies will sense that so and so is godly person, because there is a verse here where now <laughs> where now these Egyptians eh, verse verse. 25 Exodus 14 verse 25 what God did because now it's not the Israelites fighting it's God fighting God jammed their chariots hmm? he jammed the wheels of their chariots so that they had difficulty driving <laughs> have you ever had a car and then the, the, the wheels jam and yeah. they can't move. Eh? Yeah. So that's what happened. They had difficulty in driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Rond is fighting for them against Egypt. Even your enemy will testify. That is surely this is a child of God. Even the enemy will testify. The, the waves will come. The waves will come, and you're not going to take that 10 shillings to that witch man. People, your friends will come to you at night. Hey, why, why, why is this happening? This is not normal. I'll take you somewhere, and you, you stand. And after all this, because after the, the waves comes a still life. People, even your enemies, will testify, surely there is God in heaven who is fighting for his children, for his children. So what happened to these Egyptians after, after the chariots jumped their wheels? So they were in the middle of the sea, following the Israelites. Then, God, the, when they said this, my favorite commentator said they had the voice of an angry God. Walisikia sauti ta mungu mwenye amefanya nini? Amekasirika. The Egyptians had the voice of an angry God. Wakasema, wacha turundi. Wacha turundi. But remember, Moses had told the Israelites, the Egyptians you see today, you will see no more. Yeah. So when they started to go back, Moses just did like this with this road. And the water, the, the, where there was dry land, became now the normal sea. And the Egyptians, yeah. all of them, all of them died. Yeah. God was not happy. Let me tell you. God was not happy by the death of a sin. God was not happy. He was very sorrowful. But because they had hardened their hearts, if you harden your heart, God has no option. God has no option. So the Israelites, the, the Israelites saw with their naked eyes those great armies, those commanders, Perishing. Who fought for them? God. It's God. Who God fought for them? 
The Egyptians were seized with confusion and dismay amid the wrath of the elements, in which they heard the voice of an angry god. They endeavored to retrace their steps and flee to the shore they had quitted. But Moses stretched out his rod, and the piled up waters, hissing, roaring, and eager for their prey, rushed together and swallowed the Egyptians' army and it just swallowed them. Kuna mtu aliniambia kwamba manji wakati ina inakunja na hiyo funjo ya kupeleka mtu inalia sauti ingine. Niliambiwa hivyo eh. Inalia sauti ingine na ikipeleka huyo mtu akifa inaturi. Hii manji sasa ilikunja ikilia hissing hissing. Jehovah Aaron had brought them deliverance. Kuna kitu Israelis walifanya ni Mungu aliwapigania. Mungu akikupigania what is your response? What is your response? The Israelites response was to praise the Lord with songs. If you go to Exodus chapter 15, you see the song of Moses and who was the chorister? Miriam was the chorister. And verse 2 Verse 2, you can, it's the whole of chapter 15, Exodus 15. But look at verse 2. The Lord is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is my strength and my defense. And in the morning, we were saying, the God is my shield. You see, we have good promises in the bible our part of the covenant is just to believe hear the promise the promises are there in the bible hear them believe and what you believe you become what you believe you become so the the israelites praised god and somebody said did they have time to come to compose the songs. All the songs just came automatic. Yeah? Was there time for composer? Yeah? And somebody said, as, as people who compose songs from nowhere are renders. <laughs> and you know where where you compose those songs. <laughs> they know, they know where they compose the songs. Yeah? yeah. So when God has fought for you. You, you, you are, your response should be to praise God, to praise God. The song, that song, eh? Exodus chapter 15, that song does not belong to the Jewish people alone. That song does not belong to the Israelites alone. It's, it's also our song. It's also our song. And if you go to Revelation chapter 15, verse 2 and 3, and you can read for me, Revelation 15, 2 and 3, because we are, we are saying we will also sing a song of victory. Even as we will sing a song of victory, Revelation 15. Tena nikaona kitu kama mfano wa bahari ya kiyo, rio changamana na moto. Na wale wenye kushinda watokao watok kwa yule mnyama na sanamu yake na kwa hesabu ya china lake walio kuwa wamisimama kando kando ya hiyo bahari ya kiyo wenye vinyudi ya mungu. Nao wa, wa wimba wimbo wa musa na mwana kato. Nao wa wimbo, wimbo wa musa mtumwa wa Mungu na wimbo wa mwana kondoo wakisema ni, mu, ni makuu na ya ajabu matendo yeah, yake yes. e bwana Mungu wa mateshi yeah so even us even us god is fighting for us even today every day god is fighting for you your response your response should oh, don't wait until that day when you sing be singing every day songs of 
praises to the Lord. That every day we are receiving blessings. The daily blessings that we receive from the hand of God and the daily blessings that we receive from the hand of God. Count your blessings one by one. Even waking up today, a Sabbath morning, with health. Have you counted that one as a blessing? Or us is just complaining, I don't have this. There are people with everything, but they are in hospitals, hospital beds, with oxygen. As we are breathing free, those people who are being given oxygen, they are the beer. Before you are even admitted to be given that oxygen, deposit one million. One million ton. Where will you get one million? Right now. One million. Count your blessings. And if you go to Psalms 146, verse 2, it says, I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. I will praise the Lord all my life. Don't complain. Any situation, any situation, even the song we sang. Mkono akini shika kamwe sita nunika ataka jo nirete a nita yari kupokea. Don't complain. Don't complain. Stanza two was saying, Pengine ni? Mashakani. Pengine, in, in, in Christian life, in Christian life, you, you'll meet troubles, you'll meet happiness. In everything, Philippian says, rejoice in the wrong always. I don't know when you are happy, it's when you are rejoicing. God knew that in this life, because the king of this life, of this world, is Satan, who is bringing a lot of tribulations, trials to us. Eh? Be happy always. Repre you are God's representative on, on earth. If you want to represent your God as a grooming God, a God who does not wish you well, and, and in the lesson we are saying, arise and shine. Now, will you be shining when you are grooming? So even if you are facing challenges, rejoice in the Lord always. Praise the Lord as long as you have breath. There is a verse we said, Moses told the people, go forward, go forward. And we are saying, in marching down to the very water, they showed that they believed the word of God as spoken by Moses. As spoken by Moses. They did all that was in their power to do. And then the mighty one, the, the mighty one of Israel divided the sea to make a path for their, for their feet. You have a problem. So there are those people who don't go to hospital. Now you have to do your part. You have to do your part. Even when Jesus went to raise up Lazarus, Jesus did not remove the stone. They were told to remove the, the stone themselves. So there is your part. There is your part to perform. There is your part to perform, and then God does the bigger, the bigger part. The, the great lesson here taught is for all, all time. Often, the Christian life is beset by dangers. Life, the Christian life is beset by dangers. There are so many dangers in this life. And duty seems hard to perform. The imagination pictures impending ruin before and bondage or death behind. Yet, the voice of God speaks clearly. Go forward. No, the dangers, whatever is happening, God is telling you, trust me, go forward. We should obey this command, even though our eyes cannot penetrate the darkness and we feel, we feel the cold waves about, about our feet. 
Somebody is saying, if, if the curtain that separates us, what you can see and what you can see, that curtain is removed, you just praise God. If, you can, if just that curtain can be removed and you see the battles, the Lord is fighting for you. You won't complain. You won't complain. You just uh, you just praise the the Lord all your 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 lives. And we are told God will not remove all the obstacles. The obstacles that hinder our progress will never disappear before a haunting, doubting spirit. Those who defer on vengeance till every shadow of uncertainty disappears and there remains no risk of failure or defeat, will never obey at all. Yani, it's like you are giving God conditions. It's like you are giving God conditions. God remove this and this so that I can... No, the sea was there, the, the armies were coming, but they were told to move what? Move. So you are supposed to move forward despite the, the challenges. Despite, because there is no way God will remove all, it's like now telling God, now remove all the bandy people in this country. So that when I'm walking with my phone or with my bag, I, 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 I won't be robbed. God cannot do that because those are his people. <laughs> hmm? The path, the path where God leads the way may lie through the desert or the sea. The path where God leads the way, like we have seen the Egyptian, the, the Israelites, where were they then? The sea, the desert, the desert, where there is no way. The path where God leads the way may lie through the desert or the sea, but it is a safe path. Note that it's a safe path. Pengine ni mashakani. Nami pengine lahani. Ni radhi injapo yote. Yupo nami siku? The God is fighting. In a tight corner, the God is fighting your battles. He respect. You know even the small children have their tight corners. Eh? I have my, my grand jam there. Now she's crying. Even the night that he came to wake me up. I didn't hear. She cried the whole night because of some vaccines she was given. That's a tight corner. Now I'm going to leave this. That's a tight corner. She's sick. Hmm? But the path where God leads the way may ride through the desert or through the sea. But it is a safe path. Don't leave God's path. Hmm? Like now they could have said, ah, now apa, kuna jia, siru jitaftia jia, apana. Don't leave God's path. It's a safe, a safe path. So in whatever situation you are facing, you cannot see ahead of today. You cannot know at 4 p.m. what will happen to you. Can you see? But God knows. God knows. And he is with you. So stop complaining. Stop complaining. Maybe you have never faced a tight corner. Me, I faced one. I faced one. And that's where I want to, to end with my own experience. My own tight corner. Uh, I was how many years? I was in form for. Let me talk. Let me not talk of the years. Eh? I was in form for. Uh, my dad has died when I was in nursery school, like five years. Eh? That's when my dad died. And now we were left with my mom, a single mom. Challenges of a single mother, I know them. Challenges. They face a lot of challenges. But in God is very faithful. When you are widow, when you are orphan, God is very faithful. So here we are with our mom, and like five years. She developed some cancer, and then when I was in Form 4 in August, she died. So no mom, no dad. I'm the firstborn girl, we are five. I'm the firstborn girl in Form 4, it's on 23rd August. Those are the dates I will not forget. Eh? 23rd August, and I'm starting the exam 21st October. 
my mom has died. And the, the, I mean, from for the first girl, the only person who, who, who could, even if she was sick in bed, I could go in the evening in a movie, Mama, by nine dangers. She was sick, but now I have that when she was sick because I could have. To pick a nini there. Now she's gone. I'm in form four. My other sister was in class eight. We were left. Read through. They are poor orphans. But even the, the, the thing of orphan did not creak my mind. I'm married, I have children. But I remembered something. Did God say that this orphan, when he gets married, he, he, he fails to be an orphan? So I'm still an orphan. And God is saying he is the father and, and the mother of orphans. So I'm still an orphan. I'm still enjoying God's blessings because I am I'm believing that God is my father. And today, even if you are not an orphan, God is giving you a promise that be still. You are just to 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 obey God. Be still is to be still. Don't go to, to the witchcraft. Don't listen to doubting Thomases. Mom will be healed in Jesus' name. Whatever the doctors diagnose. So there's this man who this render who had gone to all the doctors. This render with a printing problem. The doctors had failed. But you trust in Jesus. You will heal all the diseases you have. But after the hearing, remember to thank God and sing songs of praises. Mungu awambadiki. Mungu awambadiki. And in the Christian journey, we are going to face more challenges. Whatever challenge you face, remember that God will fight for the youth. The challenges are there. Looking for a good man. Is that not a challenge? Most men are not committed. Now looking for that committed mom, committed dad. Because you'll be a mom to your children. Dad to your children. Looking for the you've seen how your dad has been committed. And you're saying, now if I can get a committed man like dad. But God is there. God is telling you, stand still. I will fight for you. God will bring to you. But you can't go to the Now you don't involve God. You are now going your way. Yeah. So school fees, that's a tight corner. God is there. Si mungu ambaliki sana. Na we can pray. We end the session. And after that, we will repeat the song. And as you sing that song, let it be your song. Pengine ni mashakani. Mukono wa mungu ukinishika. Kama sita fanya nini? Remove the complaints from your heart. Tuombe. Father in heaven, this afternoon, you've spoken to us that whatever situations we are facing, we are to stand still, trust in you, and you will fight our battles. We have many battles, which you know them. Round, we are surrendering to you to fight for us. Be with us. Let your Holy Spirit, let your Holy Spirit lead us in the correct way. Let your Holy Spirit teach us to discern your voice and listen to your voice. And let your Holy Spirit Teach us to obey because in our own human weaknesses we are weak and Lord, it's only through your Holy Spirit that we can be able to obey you. Forgive our sins and the trespasses which may hinder our prayers from reaching unto thee and it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.